With OnePlus's phone software becoming more fully featured than before, there's lots to sink your teeth in with the version of Oxygen OS running on the Android 13 powered OnePlus 11. I'm Cam Bunton from Pocketlint and in this video I'm going to show you some of my favourite tips and features that I found useful while using the latest flagship phone from OnePlus. If you do find it useful, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. So first up, turning an app into a floating window. Now one of the newer features in OnePlus's latest version of Oxygen OS is the ability to run an app as a floating window on the display, over the top of other apps and interface layers. It's enabled by default and there are a couple of ways to activate it. The easiest, when the app is open, is to swipe up from the bottom of the app and keep going past the point where it would normally activate your recent app's view. You'll see a floating window graphic appear at the top, and then you just release and it'll become a floating window. It's not supported by every app, but it will work with many of them. The other way to activate it is to go into your recent app's view by swiping up and holding, and then tapping the three-dot menu above the preview thumbnail card of the desired app. You should see floating window as an option in the drop-down list that appears is, choose that and it'll create a floating window. Once the floating window is active you can move it around or you can tap to enlarge it or double tap to make it full screen again. You can also move it off the screen by swiping it away at which point it becomes a floating tab on the edge of the screen which you can drag back to make it a floating window again. Second is enlarging app folders. So as is typical for Android and has been for a while, when you drag an app icon on top of another, it creates a small folder of apps on the screen. However, you can also make larger folders which show more app icons and also allow you to tap directly on the app in the folder so that you don't have to open the folder first in order to get to that app. Press and hold on the folder and in the pop-up menu choose Enlarge Folder to turn it into a bigger one. Next is enabling and using the Smart Sidebar. Now this one's definitely an Oppo inspired feature but you do have the option to have a sidebar always accessible from the screen. Using it you can quickly launch favourite apps or shortcuts and go into split screen mode. Just open Settings, find Special Features and on the next screen tap Smart Sidebar. Toggle it on and go through the options to customize its appearance. Now you'll see a tab on the right side of your screen. If you swipe it to the left, it'll open and show a default collection of functions and apps. However, if you tap edit, you can change it up, replacing them, removing them and adding new ones. Next is a really easy split screen mode gesture. Now there's a really easy way to get into split screen mode for multitasking and it's simply swiping up with three fingers on the screen when you have an app open. Choose the app you want to appear below it and there you go, split screen mode. You can drag the bar to reposition the split, or drag it all the way to the top or the bottom to make one of them full screen again. On a similar note is one-handed mode. This is Android's default one-handed mode and you can activate it by simply swiping down near the bottom of the display. This brings content down from the top and makes it easier to reach. If it's not enabled, you can find it in settings by searching for one-handed mode and then toggle it on. Now let's talk camera tricks for a little while and the first one is shooting hands-free selfies. So one really useful feature is hidden away in the camera settings and it allows you to take a selfie without needing to physically press a button on the phone. Instead you can just show your palm to the camera and it'll snap a selfie. It's a feature we've seen on Samsung phones and you can access it on the OnePlus 11 by launching the camera then opening the camera settings menu by tapping the three dots in the corner and now choose settings. Now find shooting methods and on the next screen toggle on the option that says show palm. Now when you show your palm to the camera it'll do a countdown and take a selfie. Another camera based tip is the ability to snap a photo by tapping anywhere on the screen. So in the exact same menu as the previous tip you'll see an option that says tap to capture. If you toggle this on you'll be able to tap anywhere on the camera view to snap a photo. You don't have to tap the orange button. It makes it easier to shoot when you're already stretching or the button is hard to get to. Next is turning your volume button into a zoom. So by default like most phones if you're using the camera and press either volume up or down it'll take a photo. If you'd rather use it for the zoom function instead you can do. It lets you zoom in and out without touching the screen and that that can be a bit of a godsend. Just open up the camera settings using the three dots in the corner of the camera app, then hitting settings. Scroll all the way down until you get to the useful features options and now tap volume button action. Now tap zoom to select it and your volume button will now zoom in and out in the camera. One last camera trick for you is shooting straight. This has been there for a while but OnePlus's camera software lets you add a level guide to show when you're holding the camera level or straight. It's useful for ensuring your horizons aren't skewed. Just open the camera settings again and toggle on the level option. 
moving back into the software and the interface, and another tip is adjusting your haptics. One of the benefits of a high precision haptic system is the ability to adjust it to suit your preferences, so you can have it feel as strong or crisp as you like or you can switch them off altogether if you want to. Just head into the main settings app, find sound and vibration, and then haptics and tones, and you'll be able to adjust the intensity or change between crisper or gentler taps. If you want them off, just toggle them off. Next is stopping repetitive notification sounds. Another advantage of the latest versions of Oxygen OS is the ability to use Oppo's Melody notification feature. This essentially means that if you get a flurry of notifications within a short space of time, it doesn't play the same tone for every single one. Instead, it plays different notes to create more of a melody than a pestering of the same chime. Just open settings and sound and vibration and then choose notification sound and on the next screen choose one of the melody options at the top of the screen. There are four instruments to choose from, choose the one that you like. An essential one for the OnePlus 11 is making sure you're using the highest resolution and frame rate. By default, despite its Quad HD Plus resolution panel, the OnePlus 11 is set to Full HD and it will stay that way until you manually switch it to the higher resolution. It's easy to select, thankfully. Just go to Settings, Display and Brightness, and tap Screen Resolution. Now choose Quad HD Plus on the next screen. And by the same token, to ensure the fastest refresh rates are enabled, select Screen Refresh Rate beneath it, and tap High. Next is scheduling your power on and off times. Now this one's been around for quite a while, but it can be a useful feature if you don't want your phone switched on at all overnight. Head to Settings, Additional Settings, and then find Schedule Power On Off. And choose the time that you want your phone to switch off at night, and what time you'd like it to come back on in the morning. Another one that's been needed for a couple of years is using the power button as a power button again. By default, it launches an assistant if you press and hold it. But if you go into Settings, Additional Settings, and then choose Power Button, now tap Press and Hold the Power Button and choose Power Menu, and it turns it back into a Power Button again. So when you press and hold it, you'll get to the Power Off and Restart screen, and not Google Assistant. Lastly, another useful feature is changing where your screenshot preview appears. So when you take a screenshot, either by swiping down with three fingers or using the button combination, the preview appears on the left side of the screen. However, if you're left-handed or you would just rather it was on the right, you can switch it across. Again, in the additional settings menu, find screenshot. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll find the preview window location and now choose right. And the next time you take a screenshot, the preview will appear on the other side. So there you go, just a handful of tips and tricks that I found useful to get to grips with in Oxygen OS 13 on the OnePlus. 11. Let me know if you found any useful tips yourself in the comments down below or you can grab me on Twitter. I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell and that way you don't miss any more. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.